All right, how are you guys doing? The last video of the year, last preview for the year I embark on my round trip 30 hour drive to and from Phoenix tomorrow, Thursday morning. And uh, as everybody already knows, I'm not going to be making any uh, uh, live streams or any videos like that. This is just a preview. Obviously, the Patreon stuff, I'll have a lot of that up tonight in terms of my projected finishes for the truck. And Xfinity. I'm going to talk about Cup early just to get people who want to listen to the Cup stuff in and out. Um, but very quickly for Truck and Xfinity, uh, sure, yes, the practice data will be nice to have. But Trucks and Xfinity are, quote-unquote, easier to project the finishing position, even with practice, than the Cup Series. And even the Cup Series, you can kind of determine where everybody's going to be. But certainly for the Truck Series, we know the people who have the fastest trucks, okay? We, we know who has the fastest trucks for or the fastest vehicles for the Xfinity series like in the cups or in the truck series the main guys who most likely win this week at Phoenix John Hernemachek Sheldon Creed we can throw Zane Smith in there for throwing Hail Marys out uh, trying to win the championship but roughly that's how it's going to be you can kind of project you know the top five finishers pretty pretty easily top 10 finishers pretty easily and so on and so forth from the top five 15 20s everything like that you can pretty much finish it figure it out for xfinity a same thing might be some discrepancies in your top five projected finishing drivers and and how you know they actually end up finishing but really i don't think practice data is going to really swing a ton of stuff like uh where guys are going to finish or how fast a car is i want to bring that up because it's been a long time since we got practice i know we had at nashville and looking at next year we still have no idea how we're gonna exactly do it we're considering doing like a 30 minute session then qualifying then then race atlanta the first atlanta race and hey all you how am i gonna every remember when they were racing at atlanta and somebody hit the grass and they were like, oh, they should put turf there. They should put AstroTurf. And then I'm like, well, actually, uh, you know, according to my sources at uh, Atlanta, they're not going to use turf because Charlotte made a bad decision. Charlotte doesn't like having the AstroTurf there. It's actually becoming more expensive. It's hard to drain the track and blah, blah, blah. And I got called out on Twitter being like, oh, you have no sources. Why would they not? Well, guess what, motherfuckers? They're using grass at the new Atlanta. So... If you could actually believe me, and everybody listening already does that, but some people on Twitter were like, oh, I don't know about that AstroTurf talk. Oh, I don't know about the regular grass. It, New Atlanta's using real grass. It's already confirmed. I don't know why you, people have to argue that type of stuff. Anyway, so the first Atlanta weekend is a traditional weekend. Right now, plan, plan to go on the schedule of the Atlanta Motor Speedway. It's going to be, you know, happy hour, most likely on Friday qualifying on saturday and the race on sunday or maybe even a second practice at the on um first practice on friday second practice on saturday then they qualify or qualify and then practice but right now it's looking like a traditional three-day weekend for the first atlanta race that's about the only one we know right now for practice and the reason i'm bringing that up is we've had practice you know every single year for fantasy nascar and i'm not saying that don't use the practice data because obviously it's good to have it's good to see who's running long run data or it's good to see who's running you know an intermediate run a, a 15 lap run 20 lap run but for those that are new or for those that don't remember don't live and die off the practice data we only have a 50 minute practice at phoenix okay so the teams cannot be making wholesale changes in that time to see real results from their changes like if you go out and the, cup, and the cup team goes out. Let's just say Larson, for example. I think that'll be a great uh, example. So I, I expect Larson to be fast, most likely P3 in practice amongst pretty much all the runs, probably long run speed, probably uh, qual speed. He's going to probably be in the top three all day. If for whatever reason, you know, they, they run out, they run two laps, and he dives it back down to pit road, most likely not a good thing. That means, hey, we're a bit off. Hey, he doesn't like what we're seeing here. And so in a 50-minute practice session, you can really break it down to really probably 20 to 15 minutes of actual on-track activity. Break that down even less, you have less and less opportunities to see a long run in terms of maybe 15 laps or more this weekend. And so uh, obviously for trucks, you know, the practice data will be up that day. Go to racesurprise.com to have the best way to freaking read it uh, since I'm not going to be here to talk about it in a live show. Same thing with Xfinity. For the Cup Series, 
pay attention to how many laps these guys are running. Typically, if you're running one or two laps and back in the pits, one or two, three laps back in the pits, you're most likely changing something. If you're running one or two laps back in the pits, uh, no real gain, one or two laps back in the pit, no real gain, then you run one lap and you go top of the chart, well, you're most likely in Q trim, especially if you can't replicate it again. So, yes, it's good to see practice data, but don't just read it on the PDF that NASCAR releases. I encourage you to look at the lap data of practice. That's how I've always looked at practice. I don't look at the at the you know practice one 15 lap speeds i analyze and look at every single lap to see which ones are actual good laps and so when i'm breaking it down here the amount of practice time that we're actually going to see from these teams that are probably usable for dfs is very very minimal um people should arrive to this track and roughly already be in the ballpark they're just going to be making small changes and if they're making enough small changes then when you really don't have a good idea of what they're running and then there's some teams I don't expect it, but I'm sure there's some teams that are going to be trying to trim the car out for Q to try and get moved up in owner points just a little bit. It'll help them next year. Um, but that's really about it for practice data. And so don't don't live and buy all that or don't live and die on all that because we've seen before that somebody can look great in practice. Somebody looks great in practice and, and you know somebody looks great in long run. And then you play them and then they wreck. Or you play them and then somebody else gets faster. It's good to have, but don't live and die by on it. I, I would look more towards to see how these people have done this entire year. Certainly track history tells a lot. You can at least get an idea. But when you start looking at top fives and stuff, like look at them in a sense of, uh, I think, I don't use average finish at the track, but just use the eye test. Yet again, go to raceforprize.com to easily see. Don't just go on Racing Reference and see, oh, he has five top fives or six top tens. Like, let, let's look at uh, Kyle Busch, for an example. I'm looking at the uh, the last nine races here. What are his finishes? 25th, 11th, 3rd, 2nd, 1st, 1st, 2nd, 7th, 3rd. I think Kyle Busch is most likely going to arrive to the track and probably bottom of the barrel finish around 7th, just right now, thinking. When you look at Joey Logano, 2nd, 3rd, 1st, 9, 10, 37, 19, 12, 31. We've seen him slowly increase from a top 12 car at the end of races to a ninth place car. Last three races here, top five car, easily give him a top five projected finish, you know, just entering this weekend. Same thing when you look at Kevin Harvick, massively consistent, most likely going to finish in the top eight, back on speed. When you look at the speeds that Harvick has carried at this part of the year, you know, they're back to where they were last year. And I think this practice data, this practice is going to help people like Harvick. It's going to help people like Kyle Busch, people that like to feel the car out and that normally spend the first 125 laps of a race, you know, telling the crew chief what he needs. Well, now he has practice. So keep that in mind. Kyle Busch, not a championship four, did not want to be part of the joke the NASCAR wanted to, to, to put on of, of him having to wreck Bowman to get in the championship. But I think Kyle Busch is going to be competitive. I think he's going to be there. Um, you know, I think practice can really elevate a lot of these guys that – have been, you know, a little bit underperforming right when they arrived at the racetrack. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is when we look at the championship four, I want to try and probably get two or three of those guys in a line, regardless of where they start, because there's a chance everybody just kind of gets out of the way. There's a chance that nobody really try and, tries and race with them. Phoenix, the track sucks. The The championship sucks that it's hosted here. There's no real good lanes. You know, it's still a one-groove racetrack. You might either see the teams running the top of one and two and then the bottom of three and four or running the apron in one and two and then still the bottom of three and four. It's still a one-groove racetrack. It just depends on where that groove moves throughout the entire race. The only time to make real gains is on the restarts, and I imagine we're going to see an accident probably in one or two on a restart at some point. Um, this weekend in the Cup Series, maybe in the back of the field, just guys trying to race hard. Um, so also keep that in mind. I do believe that the Championship Four are the main guys that lead this race. You don't want to be that guy who gets in. You don't want to be that guy, regardless of how jokey this championship is. You don't want to be the guy that fucks over a Championship Four guy. Um, so I think Championship Four guys are pretty safe. I'd try and get two or three of those each in a line. Um, let's see. Do let's see. Do you play narratives? We kind of talked about this on the live show last week. And whenever there's narratives in NASCAR, do you? I think you you, you need to really jump on the narrative street. Um, case in point, when anytime a, a, a team ends up having a crew member die or a crew member pass away, play them that week. It's usually worth unless you're Ryan Vargas and you wreck. Um, but it's usually worth chasing that. If somebody ever has a uh, <laughs> 
if anybody has a miscarriage, you need to play them that next week. That's I truly believe that's why uh, uh, Chase Briscoe won at Darlington that week, coming out of that. Um, last race, I think this is worth chasing Matt DiBenedetto. Um, before he, he senses himself out of the out of the out of the sport, I think it's worth playing Matt DiBenedetto in this package. I think it's worth considering playing Ryan Newman in this package because this is Ryan Newman's last race. It's hard for me to believe that we're going to see Newman back in a race car, um, and so I think Newman's an, an interesting play uh, this week for sure. Um, you know, at least. You know, I, I like following the narrative. Now, if, now, legit, like if Newman just shows up and he's dog shit in practice, don't play him. If Matt DiBenedetto shows up in practice and he's complete dog shit, don't play him. But I think DiBenedetto is in play. The only issue is when it comes to guys trimming out their cars. Um, watch qualifying uh, and pay attention to how the car reacts. I know it's already sealed to the ground, but you can tell when a team is is queued out for trim and when they're queued out for you know an actual race because I'm pretty sure this is impound after they qualify. So whatever they qualify with, they're starting the race with. Um, and so I expect Larson to probably start in the top three. I expect um, Elliott to probably start in the top five. I expect Truex to probably start in the top five as well. Uh, same thing with Hamlin. Like I expect the four championship guys to most likely all start in the top seven. Um, the one that, that looks most consistent between their their queue time and their practice time would make a lot of sense to me uh, to end up chasing and, and, and going after them. Um, this race should be green regardless of what how however ugly the truck race ends up being, however ugly the Xfinity series ends up being. I think the Cup series will be pretty green. I don't think anybody's going to do something real stupid. And if they do, hopefully it's in front of me in my section so I get a good view of it. Um, Additionally, if somebody decides to wreck somebody, if you could please have shrapnel come up and hit my seat so I can sue the shit out of NASCAR, that would also be appreciated. Um, I think that's really about it. When we're now, you know, moving on to the truck and Xfinity um, trucks, I think you, I think you either play John Hunter or Creed or both those guys together because that's who's most likely going to win this. Uh, this helps John Hunter Nemechek. I think this really makes the four car unstoppable because. We know how fast they are when they unload well. If they unload bad, well, guess what? You don't have practice. You can't really make the changes needed. John Hunter Nemechek seems to me that if this car doesn't arrive to Phoenix as the fastest car, they're going to fix it in practice. They're going to find any issues in that car in practice. Creed should be second fastest um, in general. Personally, I'll probably be on uh, John Hunter Nemechek in, in probably the one line I make. Um because I'm still going to be playing DFS. Hey, DFS is legal in, in Arizona. Did you know that? Man, I looked in... I'm always used to reserve an entry either in Texas or, or New Mexico then updating it there. No, Arizona's... Uh, you can play DFS in Arizona, so we'll be... I'll probably be making at least one line uh, for all these races. Uh, not a ton, but... Uh, I think it. I think it's John Hernie Machek all the way. Um, looking towards... Uh, Xfinity is really the only not not wild card, but this is one where I can see a lot of guys actually showing up. And where Xfinity is honestly the one where I'd probably look at practice data more than even the Cup Series or Truck Series because we have so many guys on an even playing field. We got Hemrick, AJ, Cindric, um, fifty four car. I believe Ty Gibbs is uh, in the. Let me look at the entry list real quick. Who's in the fifty four? No, John Hunter Nemechek's in the fifty four. Um, so we have the we even throw the seven in there so we have the seven eight 18 22 and 54 is your main guys i think whoever shows up in practice out of those should be the guy that you kind of focus on from there um last thing i want to touch on is we have the new next gen car obviously next year for the cup series so i would just take all that practice data all the data you gather from this year all the data you gather from next year just go ahead and put that in a folder on your on your desktop or your Google Drive and just never fucking open it again. Don't delete it, but never open it again. Uh, the only thing that I would keep for next year is recent track history. And even then, take it with a very, very big grain of salt, like we're back in Roman times paying in salt. Um, take it very, very sparingly because it's a whole new different car next year. Different way to set up the car, different way to race. We're running with a bigger wheel, a wider wheel. We're going to be able to... You don't even drive these tracks the exact same. Your braking point is a lot deeper. They got the composite bodies, which I am not fully sold on. I still think we're going to see a ton of mechanical issues 
with the uh, rear suspension in this new cup car. I don't know how it's going to survive impacts a ton because that's the main point that's been having issues in terms of uh, their crash tests and everything. So keep that in mind. And uh, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for listening. And it's uh, almost Christmas time. Merry Christmas. I went to uh, uh, Academy the other day and I was listening to Christmas music, buying uh, jeans and stuff. So consider please or please consider donating on my PayPal if you'd like what I've done this year. Uh, I would say join Patreon, but after this race, it's kind of useless up until February. So, hey, don't join Patreon uh, during the offseason unless you just want to donate that 20 bucks. Um, but consider sending me some money on PayPal for either Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever you want to give it out for, New Year's. Either way, we'll see you guys next year, and uh, thank you for listening. And this is just my couple thoughts before I start packing up and getting ready to head on down to good old western united states good old arizona good old flagstaff good old goodyear and everything else i'll pass on the way over there so see you guys next year